I have come here making a special appeal to the people of Tamil Nadu. These elections are not normal elections. These elections are very crucial to the very existence of India as a secular democratic republic. The outcome of these elections will decide whether India will continue to remain, as our constitution says, a, sexual, a secular democratic republic, or will the BJP, as the political arm of the RSS, take India towards their fascistic understanding of a Hindu Rashtra. Now, this is the real challenge in this election. What is required is to save India today, as we know according to our constitution, so that all of us together can change India tomorrow to a better India. And to do that, it is essential that today this BJP government under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi be defeated, the strength of the left be increased and the left and secular allies increased and an alternative and an alternative secular government is established in Delhi after these elections. That is the only way we can save India and change India for the better tomorrow. That's why I'm very glad that in this historic city of Madhuram Meenakshi, in this temple city, the candidate of the Progressive Secular Alliance is actually a Sahitya Academy winner and a comrade and a dedicated patriot maintaining the character of modern India that is defined in our constitution. And therefore, I am here appealing to all of you that from the Madurai constituency, you must please send Comrade Venkateshan as the MP from this area to Delhi so that he can join all of us in Delhi to protect India today so that we can change India tomorrow. These last five years, this Modi government has mounted a multifarious attack on our country and our people. Take the economic conditions of our people. In the last five years, except for the super rich in our country, every single section of our people, their livelihood status has declined. Our farmers continue to commit distress suicide. Our youth are aimlessly wandering all over the country in search of jobs. Modi promised debt relief for the farmers. He promised one and a half times the cost of production as the minimum price for their produce. They were betrayed. Modi promised 10 crore new jobs in the last five years. Today, we have the highest level of unemployment in the last 50 years. Today, our youth, which is the future of our country, 52% of our population is below the age of 25. They will make the new India. Today, they do not have their jobs, they do not have a future, they do not have the security. And this is what Modi and his policies have reduced our country and on top of that came your demonetization, came your GST. And with that, all your small scale industries and informal economy have been ruined. So the life living conditions of crores of Indian people has vastly deteriorated by the policies of this government. And they benefited only a very, very small section of our prime minister's good corporate friends. But on the other hand, the public monies are being looted and this government has been facilitating that loot. More than 13 lakh crores of rupees have been taken as loans from our banks. Bank loans mean what? Your money, my money in the back end accounts. That is given to the friends of the Prime Minister. Many of them have left the country and these monies are not coming back. The Rafale fighter jet the deal that was made, that is a big, big scam. And again today, from the most respected paper in Tamil Nadu, the Hindu, a new exposure has come out of how the Modi government and the Prime Minister's office facilitated this sort of a loot that is taking place, a major corruption. And then you have their friends being given tenders before the election for privatizing airports, 
they try to do that with your Salem Highway, which the High Court, Tamil Nadu High Court has very correctly. Today it has cancelled it and that is in the interest of the farmers of Tamil Nadu and we, we completely support it and we wanted this to happen. But then both BJP and AIDMK were deprived of their commissions through the tenders they would give for building this highway. So this is how the money is being looted of our country. And this loot has never seen such a big dimension today of what is happening in multiple ways, how this loot and corruption is growing. But instead of uh, answering all these questions, why he betrayed all the promises he made, the Prime Minister? Why he's created a situation where 73% of the total wealth generated in India is going into the hands of 1% of our country's population? Why he's created these two Indias? One for the super rich and the rest for the majority of Indians. One is shining, the other is suffering India. These are two Indias Mr. Modi has created. Now this cannot remain like this. This has to change. But instead of answering these questions, he announced his manifesto yesterday, where again he's made the same promises. What he made in 2014, he's again repeated them for 2019. This reminds me of a short story in Telugu, my mother tongue, that I'll tell you, which is, I think, most appropriate for our Prime Minister. That is a story of, about a pickpocket. Now, pickpocket is also called PM. Pickpocket. <laughs> so, but, uh, this uh, story is about a worker, a poor worker. He gets into the bus after collecting his salary for the whole month. And he says he is going home to his village. Then the conductor comes and says, buy your ticket. So our worker friend puts a hand in his pocket and he finds that somebody has picked his pocket. The pocket has been picked, so no money. So our uh, worker friend tells the conductor, please let me go home. All my monthly earnings have been looted. My wife will be waiting anxious. I have many worries. Please let me drop me at my home. The conductor says, no, either you buy the ticket or he stops the bus, rings the bell, stops the bus and tells the driver not to go forward. He said, either you get down or you buy the ticket. There are other workers in the bus. Tension between everybody. Everybody else also wants to go home. So there's almost a situation of a fight developing. At that time, one of the passengers in the bus, he tells the conductor, okay, you please take all of us home. I'm by, I hear the money for our friend's ticket. I'll buy his ticket. So let the bus go. So the story ends with this question. In today's Kali Yugam, who is this Mahanubhava? Who is taking money from his own pocket and buying somebody else's ticket? And who is this Mahanubhava? The same pickpocket who first, who first, who had, I mean, who had, who had stole more than 5,000 rupees of his monthly salary. And now he is giving 10 rupees from that then saying that I am, I am the savior for everybody. That is like our prime minister today. For five years, he has looted all of us. He has made our life miserable. Now he comes with a manifesto like that Kali Yuga Mahan Baba. And he says, I am now promising. If you elect me for five more years, I will do the same thing that I promised five years ago. So like that story, that you must, you must realize that the people who loot us appear before us before election so that we can, yeah, I mean, they can get our vote. And remember, no pickpocket operates alone. Pickpocket operates always at least in a group of two. If you are caught, the other fellow will divert attention. So here for this pickpocket, you have a companion in Tamil Nadu. That is your chief minister. So the PM and the chief minister together, this is how they are looting before the election. We must beware of that and discard their pre-election promises that they make. That is why it is not only on this question of ruination of our livelihood, but you look at every other aspect of our constitutional republic. Every single institution 
set up by the Indian constitution and parliamentary democracy is under attack. For the last five years, the Indian parliament has been undermined. The least number of days the Indian parliament met since we became independent was in these five years. The judiciary is under attack. Judiciary complains of government intervention and pressures in delivery of justice. The CBI has become the political instrument of this government to be used to protect their leaders and to attack the opposition leader. The RBI is being undermined. Its reserve fund is being targeted by the Modi government for its own spending. The election commission, question marks are now being raised. Even today, first phase of election is day after tomorrow. Campaigning is supposed to have stopped already. But then you will have the Namo television, which does not have a license, which has not got a legal entity, that campaigning with the Prime Minister campaigning, but no action is being taken. The, the film produced by on the Prime Minister Narendra Modi, that has been cleared to be shown. Remember in your Tamil Nadu, whenever a film actor or a film personality, which you have a large number of them who have, who have come into politics, when the election is going on, their films are never allowed to be shown. How is, how is Mr. Narendra Modi's film being shown? These are the questions that are arising that institutions are being undermined today. Institutions are being undermined today and that is very dangerous because undermining our parliamentary democracy and constitutional institutions means the effort to transform the secular democratic republic of India into the RSS version of a fascistic Hindu Raj that they have been aiming since before independence. The BJP is only the political arm of the RSS. And that is why on this count also, this government will have to be defeated. Otherwise, we can't protect our secular democratic republic. There's one more reason why this government must be defeated. That is the manner in which they have sharpened communal polarization during the last five years. In many parts of the country, there are private armies that have been created in the name of cow protection, in the name of moral policy, meaning they will tell our children what dress to wear, what food to eat, whom they should befriend. All that will be dictated by them. And anybody who doesn't follow that will be attacked. Dalits and Muslims are specially targeted and killed in the name of cow protection. The social unity of our country is being torn asunder by sharpening of this communal polarization and all the communally divisive agenda are now being raised again before the elections in order to consolidate the Hindutva communal vote bank. The worst form of vote bank politics that is being played. This will only completely disrupt the social harmony in our country amongst our people and lead to tensions and fratricide and a big, big loss of life and, and, and a big disruption of our social amity. Now, this is very dangerous in a country like ours. With such a diversity, if you sow the seeds of discord, this country can never remain united. That is exactly what they are doing, and in order to keep our country united, it is necessary that they should be defeated. But the Prime Minister and the BJP don't answer any of these questions. Instead, they try to rouse emotional, emotional passions, and on the basis of emotions, they want to ask people to vote. The, the issue on which they are now rousing emotions is in the fight against terrorism. Fight against terrorism is something on which every single Indian is united. Fighting terrorism does not mean fighting by ruling party or by the opposition party. India has to remain united in the fight against terrorism because terrorism is an enemy of our nation. But instead of keeping people united, what is the Prime Minister and uh, the BJP RSS doing? 
they are dividing the people of India by claiming that they are the only ones who are capable of fighting terrorism. By this, they are forcing questions to be raised. If they are the only ones who are capable of fighting terrorism, then why is it today? Today, when just a few hours before our meeting in Madurai, there was a Maoist attack on a, <coughs> in Dantewada, and in that attack, the reports are still coming. People, six people have been killed. Today, it's happened. In the last five years, the terrorist attacks have increased by 200% in Jammu and Kashmir. In the last five years, the number of soldiers who were martyred, the number of civilians who died, have more than tripled in Jammu and Kashmir due to terrorist attacks. Why? You said, Mr. Modi, that after the Uri attack, terrorist attack, in, uh, then we did surgical strikes. We said now terrorism is over. After that, Fulbama happened. After Fulbama, our Indian Air Force very bravely goes and shoots down targets inside Pakistan, which every one of us hailed and supported. Then you said terrorism will stop. After that, more nearly 20 of our Jawans have been martyred due to terrorist attacks in Jammu and Kashmir after the Balakot. Terrorist actions still take place. And today this happens in Dantewada. So are you succeeding? What is the reality? But no, rousing passions. Today also on, on the television, our Prime Minister has given an interview asking people to vote for the valor of our Air Force pilots. Yes, wherever there is an Air Force pilot standing in elections, we will vote. But why should we vote for you, Mr. Prime Minister, when the valor is theirs which we supported? It is their valor. And instead of going into all that, this emotional appeals is what they do. Without asking any question that the country needs to know and we all people need to know. Now this emotional appeals. Now the Prime Minister says he is the country's Chaukidar. Chaukidar is, is the security guard. Earlier he used to say he is the security guard on land. After the Bala Court, the air strike by the Air Force, he claims, it's not the Air Force, but he claims, the Prime Minister, he is now the security guard of the sky. After the Indian scientists developed the missile that can hit a satellite in outer space, which the Prime Minister came and took credit. It's actually the scientist who should announce it, but the Prime Minister announced it. He took credit. Now, after that, he says, now I am the security guard of also outer space. So, I think all of us should tell our Prime Minister, Sir, you please remain the security security guard in outer space. Leave the world and India to us. We'll, we'll save India and we'll create a better India. So you please to be stay there in outer space. Anyway, this Chaukidar also prevents me from a small story. So that, uh, again, it's a Telugu story. One owner of a small factory employs a security guard. Every day when the factory owner comes and opens the factory, the security guard goes to him with a hot cup of tea and tells him stories of the dreams he saw last night when he was sleeping. So these stories are entertaining. So one day he tells a very entertaining story. The owner is very pleased. He gives him a bonus of 1000 rupees. And at the same time, he tells the security guard, you are dismissed from your job. So security guard says, sir, what is this? From one hand, you are giving me bonus. And the other hand, you are dismissing me. How can both of them happen? He says, I am giving you the bonus because you tell me your dreams which are very entertaining. Because I like that I am giving you the bonus. I am dismissing you from the job because your job is not to sleep in the night and see dreams. Your job is to stay awake and protect the factory. That job you are not doing, therefore you are dismissed. Our Prime Minister is like that. Every day he will come for the last five years. Every day he will come with a new slogan. 
स्टैंड अप इंडिया स्टार्ट अप इंडिया डिजिटल इंडिया स्वच्छ भारत एवरी डे न्यू स्लोगन एवरी डे टेल्स एस ए स्टोरी बट नाउ वी हैव गिवन इम बोनस फॉर फाइव इयर्स नाउ द टाइम एज कम टू डिसमिस हिम बिकॉज द ओनर ऑफ द प्राइम मिनिस्टर द पीपल ऑफ द कंट्री लाइक इन द स्टोरी यू गिव द बोनस विच वी हैव गिवन नाउ द टाइम टू डिसमिस हिम विदाउट दैट वी कैन प्रोटेक्ट Uh, our people's lives livelihood and the property of india and in order to protect it from a chaukidar who sleeps at night instead of staying awake and protecting he must now be dismissed but fi- finally the job is not over only by defeating the bjp and the modi government we require to establish an alternative secular government which will not only protect india and its people but will also change the policies in pro people's direction and this is exactly like what was the situation in 2004 and i remember in 2004 when the upa government was being formed kalangar was there at that time we were all discussing with all the issues of what should be the alternate policies and the common minimum program has come and because of that because of the strength of this alternative the progressive secular alternative as it's called today because of this many new things developed we happened never happened after independence the right to information the right to r- r- right to food security the right to rural employment guarantee the forest rights act for our tribals the right to education all these rights that are pro people could be brought about because of the cooperation and the consistency of the secular force progressive secular forces today in tamil nadu we have today that combination of this progressive secular alliance under the leadership of thiru stalin today in the state and i am now just now coming from kovilpatti kovilpatti kanimuri was there and we were addressing the meeting together and kanimuri and i have been colleagues in the rajya sabha for many many years and while i said so them there that she is required to be sent to the lok sabha likewise from madurai our comrade venkateshan is required to be sent to the lok sabha because you will require it is this combination it is this combination of this progressive secular alliance that in today in tamil nadu that is working in the most most effective and efficient manner that all the poll surveys are also saying that out of the 39 seats and one of pondicherry if you include out of that the progressive secular alliance will win more than 35 seats out of the 40 seats and that is their own sir prediction they are not pro us normally they give only predictions on the opposite side but that is giving that means that there is a big ground swell of people support and that is why i appeal to you there are assembly elections also by election the state government character may also change and we all know that it is likely to change and then big responsibilities will be there on thiru stalin how he will lead the thing what what will happen they'll decide but we'll have to together share these responsibilities and first of all undo the damage done by the modi government protect the country's unity integrity and improve the livelihood of our people and to do that you require alternative set, set of policies to ensure that alternative set of policies are implemented in the center you require comrade vegetation to be sent to the parliament as a member of the lok sabha and be, without that it won't be possible therefore my final appeal to all of you is to elect governor venkatesh with a big big margin and to elect all the 40 candidates of the progressive secular alliance in tamil nadu to the parliament